Hey, Todoist users. In this video, you'll learn about some features and use cases that you may not have heard of before, so you can take your Todoist game to the next level. I consider myself a Todoist power user. I've used it for a couple of years now, so I'll be sharing a lot of things I've learned along the way. If you learn at least one new thing at the end of the video, make sure to leave a like or leave a comment if you feel like I've missed something. The first tip is something that arose from a situation I'm sure you found yourself in as well, which is when you want to store something in Todoist that is not exactly a task. This can apply to things like notes, your Wi-Fi password or attachments. Now the name Todoist already implies it's mostly for managing to-dos and that's true. Every item that you add has a checkbox associated with it so that you can mark it complete when you're done with it. But did you know that you can actually remove this checkbox? This is exactly where Todoist's uncompletable feature comes in handy. All you've got to do is add an asterisk and a space at the very beginning of a task's name, and the checkbox will be removed. Discovering this was a real game changer for me and how I used Todoist, because it just made the scope of what it can be used for so much wider than just tasks. If you've seen any of my videos before, you know that I place great emphasis on emptying your head regularly. I love the quick add feature, and if you're a remote worker who's often on their computer for work, but scrolling through various apps, this is really a game changer. By pressing Alt plus T, a pop-up will appear on top of whatever I'm doing at that moment on my computer, enabling me to quickly drop something into my inbox. Pressing enter removes it from view again so I can continue with what I was doing, knowing that what was on my mind is now saved for later. Because it's literally just a small little pop-up that appears on top of what you were doing, you add what you want to add, you press enter and it's gone, so you can more easily stay in the zone, in the focused zone of working on what you are working on. Todoist has an app for mobile devices, which is great to use on its own, but you can take it a step further and let it actually take over your phone. And I mean that in a good way. The thing I'm talking about here is widgets. From your tasks to today, all the way to advanced filters, you can set these up and tweak them all the way up to an advanced level and have these display on your phone's home screen. In fact, it can actually transform your home screen by removing distractions and instead show you your task queue. This feature has really transformed my relationship with my phone. Many folks often argue phones are a source of distraction, which is true if the first thing you see when you open them is things like social media, games, or other unproductive apps. But with these widgets, it can be your trusted companion for staying on top of things. You'll probably know about natural language support in Todoist already. In fact, natural language sometimes gets in my way of what I want by assuming I'm typing in a deadline when it's just part of the task name. Point is though, natural language supports way more than just basic terms like today, tomorrow, or Tuesday. You can also use it to set up highly specific routines like every second Wednesday, every 23rd until December, or every Friday at nine o'clock, so give it a try. What's even cooler is that this natural language support is also supported for all of the languages in which Todoist has been translated. My primary language, for example, is Dutch, and I also speak German, so I tried using Todoist in those languages, and everything is always kept up to date from what I've seen. And as of recording this video, Todoist supports these 18 languages. Now this next one is not so much a feature. Instead, it's something you may just not think about as much because it's not readily available as with other apps like TickTick, for example. Using emojis in your projects or even tasks can make a big difference to your setup's aesthetic and your ability to easily process what's going on because you have a visual cue. To add an emoji to your project or task, you can just copy paste them from a website like getemoji.com or use your keyboard's built-in emoji input if it has one. Todoist will show them across every app, whether you've added them into a project, a task, label, or filter. Every Todoist task can get a time associated with it. This is usually interpreted as a due time, in other words, a deadline. But did you know that you can also make it work as a start time? 
The way I distinguish between a due date and a start date is by adding a label named next for any task I can start doing now. This means that any task with a date but no next label cannot be started until then. Once a task arrives in my today view, I can do one of the following three things. I can add the next tag and remove the date if there's no deadline. If there is a deadline, I can add the next tag and add a new date. But I can also add the next tag and do it the same day if the associated time is both the start and due time. In other words, a task that can only be performed at a specific time. Since Todoist supports descriptions, this is where I usually add information for my future self, like what is the due date going to be after the start date has been reached. So I don't have to think about this kind of stuff when it comes up. I organize my own to-dos based on context, which is basically a condition that needs to be met before I can actually perform a task. For example, it makes no sense for me to see tasks that I can only do from my laptop if I only have my phone with me. I use to do this labels feature to assign context to a task. The real magic happens though when I create a filter that selects for both a context label as well as the aforementioned next labels. As a result, using a filter like this allows me to see anything I can do now within a certain context without having to separate between tasks that cannot be started yet. Todoist allows you to email tasks directly into a project list. Since every project list has a unique email handle, here's a trick for you to automatically add newsletters to your reading list. Step one, create a project named reading list. Remember tip six about emojis? Add one in there. Step two, right click on the project. Then select email tasks to this project. Step four is to copy the email address you see. Then open your email client. And I will use Gmail as an example here. For step six, navigate to your email forwarding settings. In Gmail, this is called forwarding and pop slash IMAP. Then press add a forwarding address. Paste the Todoist project email address you copied in step three in the to field. If Gmail doesn't accept it, make sure to only paste the address between the brackets. Sometimes Todoist gives you a weird non-functioning address that won't work here. So only the ones between the triangle shaped brackets. Step nine is to open the Todoist project you selected and find the tasks which should include forwarding confirmation in the title. Then, Follow the instructions in that email to verify Todoist as a valid forwarding address. Back to Gmail, go back to forwarding and pop slash IMAP to select the option to create a filter. Find the sender address for your favorite newsletter and add it to the from fields. By the way, folks, I've recently launched the plus 1% newsletter. One actionable productivity tip once a week so you can get 1% better. Subscribe using the link in the description, implement the advice, and then let compounding do the rest. If you wanna automatically forward my email into Todoist, write lp at lucasprege.com here. Step 13 is to press create filter. And lastly, under forward it to, select the Todoist address you just verified. You can also choose to mark the email as read and archive it automatically from here, effectively skipping the inbox. A couple of notes here. First of all, it does not work for emails you've already received. Secondly, it needs to be done with care. You don't want your Todoist account to be filled up with useless clutter after all. Make sure you only allow email addresses to forward emails into Todoist that you actually trust. An alternative, more manual way of doing this, which allows you to keep a bit more control is to add one of those project list email addresses to your favorite contexts and then forward emails into there manually. And of course, this reading list trick is just an example. 
you could apply this same method for various other use cases that involve email. And I'm excited to hear from you guys what you can come up with. So let us know in the comments. If you're a Todoist user and you want to get even more out of Todoist, then pre-register for my upcoming Todoist course. You'll get an email when it's out and the email will also include an early bird discount. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching.